How to build a Blackgate Sweet P 5 inch gauge locomotive. And this is part 65. Some of the problems when working on a very badly made model steam locomotive, like this one. Correcting the faults is time consuming, but not really a very expensive job, if you get it right. This clip has been on screen for a while, and there's a reason for that. I want to show how bad it is, and also the possibilities of maybe making it properly. I had thought about duplicating this construction because it actually does work, and that's why I made the four plates, but I think I prefer the way that it's shown in the book. Which book am I talking about? It's this one. If you're a beginner to this type of thing and have limited equipment and limited knowledge, then this book you will find very useful. It explains in simple language how to build a sweet pea locomotive, but it doesn't explain these. If you don't have the machining skills, then I do sympathise, but you only get the machining skills by practising. I've added some things to the screenshot. I've added the pair of return cranks that are also very badly made. I'm definitely going to remake these. And I've also added some strips of steel. With a bit of trimming, part of these will become the links between the drain cocks. And in the end, when you move a lever in the cab, the drain cocks will open and shut. The speed at which this job is progressing is very dependent on the running order of the parts that I make. Very soon I will be able to mount the way shaft and start assembling the valve gear, but not yet. For some of the jobs coming up, like for instance making the drain cock levers, I need to turn the locomotive chassis upside down, which is much easier when the way shaft isn't stuck above the chassis, because it will lie flat on the bench. These are the original return cranks, not very well made, I'm going to replace them with new ones, but there is a problem. What you are supposed to do is fit these return cranks to the crank pin and initially tighten the two bolts on the stud to clamp the crank webs to the crank pins and that took some saying. Sometimes it takes a while to edit the audio for these videos because my speech impediment does get in the way. You can see how rubbish these are when I turn them round. I mean the slot in the centre isn't in the centre, it is on one of them, that's a good thing. But I want to rebuild this engine to a high standard. And now, the good news. Blackgate sell a set of laser cut parts. Two off vibrating levers, two off return cranks, two off brake hangers, one off brake beam, two off crosshead side plates. So what's the good news? They are not very expensive at all. Here's a comparison between the laser cut parts as they come in the packet and some of the original parts made for this locomotive. The vibrating levers are diabolical. Although they are important parts, these particular ones are so badly made, I just can't use them. It looks like the bushes, which by the way are not in the centre, are made from brass, and that is a big no-no. OK, before any experts write in, I am aware that a lot of models are made from brass. Some of them are good, and some of them are not so good. Most of them are very small, but when you get up to this scale, you cannot use brass as a bearing material. I always try and include in my videos badly made parts as well as parts that are made really well, and that's why I bought this locomotive in the first place. I could have built one right from the beginning, but there's no point in doing that. I haven't actually built that many locomotives. I built the first one when I was 25, and I was 72 years of age in January 2025, so one could say I've had considerable experience. I'd better mention that at the moment on screen are some parts I won't be using, well, maybe not, I don't know yet. Those are just brake parts, and I don't think I want to fit brakes to this. The fact is the parts are laser cut and very accurate. In this next clip, I'm knocking the centers out of the return cranks. I'm just tapping the piece of metal in the centre with a punch and once I turn it over it just falls out with a very light tap. I've shown the sequence on both of them so you can get an idea how to do it. When I called in at Blackgate's Engineering earlier on in the week I bought a piece of steel as well as all these other parts. It's much longer than I need it but the piece of steel is one and a half inches by half an inch. Ideal for the job. I'll be cutting two blocks from this piece of steel which will form the main parts of the crossheads. Much better than messing about with small bits and pieces. 
I also bought some of this. I'm going to use this to make the crosshead slippers. I think it's phosphor bronze, but it may be copper. But either way, it's better than steel against steel, and miles better than brass. And now, the not-so-good news. When I bought this locomotive, which to be fair wasn't a fortune, it even included a boiler that needs repair, it was affordable, and in my opinion, ideal for this video tutorial. I noticed that the return cranks had been drilled, but there was no evidence of any holes through the crank pins. When I looked closer, there was a drill broken off. I started to drill it out from the other end, and got three quarters of the way through, then I met the broken drill, and the tip of the drill bit that I was using was destroyed. Here I'm using it as a drift to try and persuade the piece of broken drill to come out of the metal, but to no avail. I even tried a larger hammer. There was no point continuing going down this path. The broken drill bit within the crank pin was stuck securely. This was desperation really, you can shatter carbon steel taps with a centre punch, but this is not a tap and a centre punch generally will not shatter a high speed steel drill bit whether it's broken off or not. I'm not going to pursue this any further for the moment, because there are of course other options open, one is to make a new crank pin, but first I need to see how the crank pin is fitted into the wheel, if it's loctited in, Heating it up will release it. If it's pegged in place, that's more difficult. And now, some more good news. I may not have to do anything. If this hole that I've drilled, which follows the line of the original drilled hole, and is in the right place, when I assemble the valve gear, I may be surprised. But really, the good news is, making a new crank pin is a very simple job. The next job is to tackle the pistons. There are too many things wrong with these, just look at them. How do you get the nut out of the piston on the right hand side? The space around the nut on the left hand side is ok, but there's no way I can get a socket around the nut on the piston on the right hand side. These pistons are rubbish anyway, the grooves are far too wide, that's why I fitted silicone o-rings, but I want to fit cast iron rings. I'll start making the new pistons and rods in the next episode. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.